Hello, it's Alex and welcome to Hey Little Thrifter. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in July. I read mostly horror and thrillers and one non-fiction. First up I read Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. This is about a large IKEA style furniture store and the employees that work there and strange things start to happen, there are some creepy occurrences and a group of them stay in the store overnight to try and figure out what's going on. So it is something of a haunted house story but there's a lot more going on and I think it was really well done. The book itself is actually laid out like an IKEA catalogue, um, the attention to detail is really spot on so yeah props to the team that did all of that. I really enjoyed this, I read it in just two days, it was a really quick read for me and I found it really easy to get into, I liked his writing, I could relate to the characters and the setting. If you've ever worked in retail you will probably be able to relate as well. And while this is a fun, humorous, satirical read, it also has a bit more of a serious message about finding yourself and finding who you are and what your purpose is. And I definitely related to that too, I'm still trying to figure all of that out. And yeah, I think the whole story was really well done. There were a couple of things that let it down a little bit for me. Um, some of the character motivations and decision making didn't quite make sense all of the time. Um, but the good parts of it kind of made up for it. And overall I gave it four stars. Next I read Beneath by Christy Demista. This is about a reporter who travels to a small town to write a story on the snake handling cult that live there and while she's there there are some strange incidents happening with some of the townsfolk. Alongside this uh, the reporter Cora is also dealing with some of her own demons from her past and this all comes together during her time in this town and it's something of an ancient evil meets small town kind of story and for the most part I really liked it. I did have a bit of difficulty getting into it, I didn't quite like the writing to begin with, I found some of the exposition just a bit awkward um, but once I carried on with it and kept going through the book I really got into it, I enjoyed her writing and she definitely has a knack for talking about horrible things in a really beautiful way and she also has a knack for really setting a tone and an atmosphere and that I think was my favourite part of the book, you know I really did take that atmosphere away and it did stay with me for some time after reading it. One thing that did stick with me though was there was something about the story, this isn't going to be a spoiler, but something that just didn't make sense to me. Um, and this is amongst, obviously I'm on board with all of this crazy stuff happening, like I'm believing it, but there was one thing about what was going on that I didn't understand, it wasn't explained and I was a bit confused. So that kind of stuck with me at the end and I wish that had been explained a little bit more. So I kind of had mixed feelings about it and once I'd finished it I gave it three stars um, but like I said the atmosphere uh, did stay with me for quite a long time and it made me think about it more and more so I did end up bumping it up to a three and a half star and even though it wasn't a perfect book for me I still enjoyed it enough that I would really be interested to read more of her work. Then I read Baby Teeth by Zoya Stage. I got a copy from NetGalley and this is a psychological thriller. It is about a couple, Suzette and her husband Alex, great name, and their daughter Hannah. And Hannah loves her dad. He is out at work a lot but whenever he's home she's, you know, an adoring daughter and he loves her just as much. But while Alex is away at work 
and Suzette is at home with Hannah. Hannah's not very nice to Suzette, to put it lightly, and Suzette has tried for years and years to give her daughter the love that she never had from her mother, but Hannah just does not give that love back. And Hannah goes so far as to do various things to upset and hurt her mother and whenever she tries to talk to her husband about it he just doesn't believe her because he has never seen that side to his daughter because supposedly the daughter is clever enough to keep that side of her hidden from her father. And this was billed as a psychological thriller, it was supposed to be super creepy and I just didn't enjoy it, honestly. Um, I ended up giving it two stars. I did read it all, um, I kind of had to force myself. There were a few times that I thought I was just going to put it down and not finish it, and I kind of wish I had, honestly, but I powered through. I was just hoping that it would live up to the promises of it being a really great psychological thriller, but there were no twists and turns. I was expecting there to be something along the way that would be unexpected, and there wasn't. I just honestly didn't find it very interesting, which was a shame because it did start off quite well. At the beginning, I could really feel Suzette's stress and frustration at loving a daughter that doesn't love her back, but as the book went on, they just didn't go anywhere, so I couldn't recommend it. I know it does have a lot of great reviews, so clearly some people like it. It just wasn't for me. I gave it two stars. Then, thankfully, things picked up with Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. And I absolutely loved this. I gave it five stars. I read this as a buddy read with Emily at Page Turns. I will leave her channel linked below. Go check her out. And this is a classic horror novel. This is about a couple, Rosemary and Guy. They manage to get an apartment in the Bramford, which is a very sought-after place, but also has a dark history. And one of Rosemary's friends tried to talk her out of moving in there because of the things that have happened in this building in the past, but Rosemary is caught up in the name of the place and its prestige and they move in and they are planning to have a baby and Guy is an actor so he's working on various shows while Rosemary is working on doing the apartment up and yeah they're super happy they start to meet some of their neighbours in the apartment building and after a while Things aren't quite as good as they first seemed and I won't go into detail because if you don't already know what Rosemary's Baby is about then I wouldn't want to spoil it for you but it's a super famous novel and there was also a really famous film adaptation so it's one of those stories that I've been aware of for a long time and it's so ingrained in popular culture but I didn't know what the book itself was going to be like. I actually didn't expect it to be as good as it is. I thought it was just one of those books that kind of was a bit notorious um, in the genre and one that had, you know, crossed over into pop culture. So I was pleasantly surprised to love it as much as I did. It is so well written and you were right there with Rosemary kind of navigating this situation she has found herself in and going through this roller coaster of emotions. There's so much more to say about this book, but I'll keep it brief here. But yeah, I absolutely loved it. Highly recommend it if you haven't read it before. I gave it five stars. Definitely my favorite book of the month. And then I read a non-fiction book called Satanic Panic, uh, Pop Cultural Paranoia in the 1980s, edited by Keila Janice and Paul Karoop. And this is a non-fiction book, it is a collection of essays all about the satanic panic that took place during the 1980s where a lot of people believed that there was this conspiracy of evil 
that was um, corrupting our children through cartoons, it was coming through heavy metal and things like Dungeons and Dragons. And yeah, this was a fascinating collection of essays. Um, some were better than others, but overall I really enjoyed reading it. Um, some of the cases it mentioned I was already somewhat familiar with, but some of them I had not heard of before. It was really well put together, um, there's loads of uh, photos and illustrations in here, and then in the middle there's a bunch of colour ones as well. So yeah, it was really well put together, it was yeah super interesting and yeah at times just baffling and heartbreaking, um, at other times somewhat entertaining, but yeah, highly recommend it. I am going to do a separate review video about this because I think it's worth going into it in a bit more depth. I gave it four stars. Then I took my chance with another thriller. I was kind of getting a bit downbeaten <laughs> after Baby Teeth and there's just been a couple of other like new release thrillers that I've read this year that have just been really disappointing. But this one I was really looking forward to because it is the new novel by Megan Abbott. It's called Give Me Your Hand and I got a copy of this one also from NetGalley. This is a psychological thriller about Kit. She meets a new girl at her school, Diane, when they're teenagers and they both have an affinity for chemistry and they form something of a friendship but it's not your typical friendship and after school they lose touch and the story picks up 12 years later when Kit is in her late 20s. Kit is now working in research and one day Diane, out of the blue, comes and joins their team and the story is told in a then and now, different chapters back and forth, which I thought was really well done. I really enjoyed getting to know the characters, both as teenagers and as 20-somethings. And there is a secret from their past that comes back to haunt them in the present day. And yeah, this was really good. I enjoyed it a lot. It was darker than I thought it was going to be. And I love her writing. I haven't read any of Megan Abbott's noir. I know she's written a few noir novels but I have read all of her thrillers and I think she just gets better and better and this one is definitely one of her best. Again, Megan Abbott has a definite knack for writing about horrible things in a beautiful way. Um, I found her writing really compelling and I just wanted to keep reading another chapter, another chapter. Yeah, this was just a really solid psychological thriller. I enjoyed it a lot. I gave it four stars and yeah, if you're looking for a good thriller this summer then this is the one that I would recommend. Next, back to a bit of horror with The Ruins by Scott Smith. Horrible movie tie-in cover, I'm so sorry. And this is about a group of friends. They are in Mexico on holiday and they meet up with some other travellers while they're there and one day they take a trip out to visit some ruins and once they're there they find something that they weren't expecting and I already knew the premise of this book, I had seen the film some years ago but I had heard really great things about the book so I was interested to give it a go and yeah it definitely lived up I really enjoyed it and considering it's not a super short book, it's just over 500 pages, it was quite a quick read. Anyway, this was a great read, I'm definitely glad I waited for the summer to read it because one of the things about this book is that they're in the heat so that definitely added to the experience with it being so hot here at the moment. And at first I thought the writing, it's pretty kind of plain and simple and just kind of to the point, um, which I wasn't sure I liked at first, but I did get into it and I did 
really enjoy it overall. I thought the characters were all really well written and developed and yeah this definitely goes to some gory places which I thought were all brilliantly written so I would definitely recommend checking this one out if you haven't. I gave it four stars. And lastly I took a chance on another thriller and read Final Girls by Riley Sager and I actually listened to the audio version of this and this is about Quincy. She was involved in a massacre ten years previously in which she was the sole survivor known as a final girl. This was a name she was given in the media using the horror trope of a final girl and there were a couple of other cases over the years where the sole survivors had been labelled final girls in the press. So there's Quincy, there's Sam and there's Lisa and these are three final girls that have that thing in common. So the story follows Quincy ten years after an incident in which all of her friends were killed uh, but she seems to have her life together, she's got a great fiance, she's got a great apartment in New York and things seem to be going really well for her. And one day Lisa, one of the other final girls, is found dead and this kind of sparks off a chain of events and we're trying to figure out exactly what happened to Lisa. Is there someone, you know, tracking down these final girls? And we're also following Quincy dealing with her past and the memories of that night that she has suppressed. And this is also told over two different timelines and I thought the narration was done really well because they had one narrator talking about what happened ten years ago and they had a second narrator for the present day uh, doing you know, Quincy's perspective. So I thought that was really well done and I enjoyed it. I was really enjoying this to begin with, it was easy to get into, it was fast paced but as it went on the story just got more and more convoluted and I ended up just finding it really ridiculous but not in a fun way, just in a that's really stupid <laughs> kind of way. So yeah, I had mixed feelings about it. So overall it was good, it was okay, I gave it three stars. I would still be interested to read, I know Riley Sager has a new book out, so I would still be interested to check that out one of these days, but I guess I'm just not like rushing to read it right now. So we will see. So that was everything I read in July. Let me know if you've read any of these, let me know what you thought. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!